and start recording. Uh, and I think we're golden. We started. We started. Yeah, we, we're. Wait, wait, we're. The recording. We're golden? We're golden. Yeah. We're golden. We've reached gold in Overwatch. <laughs> ah! Is this YouTube gold? Hey, <laughs> You're a platinum. Lock your mains in. I'd let Diva arrest me any day. Hey, now. God, one of, one of my exes got kind of fat. Like, I'm, I'm, <laughs> That's how it starts. I'm looking at a picture of her in her prom dress, and I'm like, "What the hell happened to you?" She like uh, a, a, is she made of lard now? No, 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 no. She's, she's, not, she's, not, she's not. She's not like morbidly obese. Like I would, I wouldn't kick. Oh wait, is that her? Oh no, that's not her. That's a little sister. Oh. Hey. Shall we start? Hey. What? Hey. What? Pickcast. Hey, pickcast. Are we going to force this? Okay. It's Hey Pitcast. Wait, is this episode of Pitcast called Hey Pitcast? Yes. First reason is that we got a bunch of Pikmin, uh, hey Pikmin, I keep my words about to call Pikmin 3DS, hey Pikmin footage today from reviewers, but also because we recorded a uh, podcast like three weeks ago and we failed to get it out in a timely manner. Essentially, the curse that we suffered last year has returned in the sense <laughs> where we record something for PickCast and right as it's like 90% done with being like edited and all that, some more Pikmin information gets released. I'm hoping the curse comes back in a sense. Well, the curse was created by an evil wizard. So, um, yeah, so we're going to be talking about that. Let me bring up the script real quick. So, not script, let's think. Also, so, also before we begin, I just want you know, I just want to apologize if you guys hear any slurping and crunching noises. I'm kind of I'm eating a very very uh, top quality pickle right now. <laughs> God, slurping. All right, so yeah. we're gonna start things out with an introduction. So we'll start off with myself. I'm Josh, aka JPM Rocks. Hey. I'm Nathan, aka Creative Sushi. Yeah, creative. Who goes next? Me? That's Jordan. No, oh, I mean, wait, Tommy's not even. I don't even see Tommy here. I guess that would be Tommy then. Tommy. Uh, I'm Tommy. Uh, you may know me as Yamat392. Uh, I don't know. That's me. Um, Jordan, that's your cue. I'm <laughs> Captain Peabody, aka Jordan. <laughs> Good job. I'm the Neverick and I poisoned all the water supplies. Oh. That's what happened. Right, so you're next. Don't play yeah, a guitar. Yeah. No. I'm uh, Alex and I'm Red Yoshi 9 and I'm Dave, one of some Tumchi's little brother. I'm not autistic, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, I am Luther, and this pickle's about two thirds of the way done, and it's damn delicious. All right, so we have Luther and Pickle. Mm. Uh, pickle cast. Wait, pickle cast. We have, we have, we have the pickle. Pickle. <laughs> we have the pickle. Yep. So, anyway, let's just get this ball. I thought he was done with Nintendo stuff. Yourself. So we got quite a bit of information to talk about with. Hey, Pikmin, both from the direct that they showed off on May 5th, or no, April 12th, my bad, and uh, the day of this recording, or yesterday, May 5th, um, the more in-depth footage showing the first three levels of the game was revealed, and this could simply be first three levels in the sense of just three levels that reviewers were able to play in New York, um, or it is the actual level one, level two, level three of the game. Um, 
So we're just gonna be talking about that, really. And we've learned some story stuff, which we'll be talking about. Uh, we're gonna be discussing some of the art, Mebo, some other thoughts, uh, some merchandise news, and some of the treasures that have been shown off, as well as some of the enemies we've seen as well. And that'll kind of cover everything. We're going to do a Switch pick cast eventually. Uh, I mean, I don't know when. I don't want to say an actual date, but it's going to happen eventually. Uh, circa 2022 is when we're getting our Switch uh, pick cast out. So, uh, well, I guess we'll, we'll get things started now. So, in case you haven't figured it out, it's called Hey Pikmin. The Pikmin game for 3DS. Yep. Um, it was pointed out that Olimar says hey whenever he calls for the Pikmin to return to him. So, hey Pikmin. And it's also probably called Hey Pikmin because English in Japanese games in Japan is really, really popular. All That's of the why it was Pikmin called the now. New Super Mario Bros. Yeah, it's New Super Mario Bros. was called New Japanese for Super Mario Bros. But the new was in English and that was hip and cool. So that's just all, kind of something they do with that. In this rendition of Pikmin, all of the Pikmin now constantly go, Hey, listen! God. <laughs> so... The game comes out July 13th for Japan and July 28th for North America and Europe and July 29th in Australia. Uh, luckily for us, one of our members, Ryan Lee, has a Japanese 3DS and will be getting the game July 13th, so we'll hopefully get tons of information out for you guys ASAP. Uh, it is the being developed by Arzest, which was known was it Artunes was their old yeah, name? original name Artunes. Yeah. Artunes. They're the ones who made Yoshi's New Island, Yoshi's Touch and Go, I think. Uh, Wait, did they Yoshi's, I didn't know that. Yoshi's Topsy Turvy, and as well as a couple other games. They're not as strict Nintendo company. Apparently, they've also made a couple games for the Xbox. And I know a lot of people were really upset that it was Arzest that was making it because of Yoshi's New Island. But I mean, from what we've seen in the footage and what the reviewers who actually got to play the game said, the game actually has a lot of potential for a lot of good, which is pretty good. And I actually decided to Google earlier, um, you know, just hey Pikmin to see what news articles we're talking about. And just going through the first seven pages of Google, I've only found one negative review, and that was from Eurogamer. And that's because the website is heavily biased against Nintendo. Uh, just going through the actual article, two of the ads are Meet the Man with 1,200 Platinum Trophies, and then Why PS4 and Xbox One are the Best Consoles. So it's heavily biased against... Not, not saying to discredit oh. their article, just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. not to discredit that. It's just pointing it out that it's their biased. Their mindset isn't in the most neutral of positions. Yeah, and even then going down to the comment section about it, the community is very neutral about it as well, which I'm glad to see. Um, yeah. And really, just going through like seven pages, I saw in Spanish, I saw in, I'm pretty sure it was Indonesian, Philippine, or whatever, is it Filipino? Philippine, whatever language they speak in the Philippines, Tangala. They all were very neutral in just what was presented. So, really, until we actually play the game, we kind of have to look at, we're, everyone's saying it's pretty neutral about it. It has a lot of potential for good, but we need more, essentially. So, that's just kind of what's going on with what people are thinking of the game. Um, anyway, moving on, let's see. It also is being released the same day the new 2DS XL is being released. So there's a possibility there might be a new 2DS XL that's to be released with Hey Pikmin included, which I honestly would probably buy. The new 2DS XL is like, what is it, 130? It's 150. 150. But if you do and not have a 3DS or 2DS yet to be able to play Hey Pikmin, I would heavily recommend getting the new 2DS XL because yeah. it's a great price price point and in my opinion probably the best uh, system in the family they've released. I've actually far. seen a lot of the more like diehard like Nintendo not fans and even they were impressed with the new 2DS XL. So I mean it's a very sleek looking device. And I think it's really just kind of to make sure that the last of the 3DS games just get shipped right, like properly. Yeah. So it's um, yeah, I, my uh, my friend who works at Nintendo, uh, he, he does have first hand, and and that's not that's not a joke. Yeah, that's not um, a joke, Tommy. I, know, I mean, it's it's gonna be hard, you know, 
to say that and be like, oh, you. I mean, I'm not even. That. I'm not even saying like, yeah. a, like, <laughs> like Sean yeah. Davis Smash Bros. I'm not even saying that. Like, yeah, yeah. Hang on, hang on. Let me just clarify for people. When he says he has a friend that works for Nintendo, he means he has a friend that literally works in like the what is it, the customer relations in the Seattle? Uh, he actually, okay, he used to work in customer service for the Switch, but uh, since the Switch, um, apparently they weren't getting very many, uh, very many calls about the Switch specifically. Uh, they had to switch some people over, haha, uh, some people over to uh, play testing. Um, because they wanted people to actually be working. So he's a play tester now. But um, he said in company, uh, uh, by, by the way, they're, they're play testing all their 3DS games with the 2DS, um, with the new the 2DS. 3DS. Yeah. Um, so he, he told me that uh, Pikmin, or uh, Hey Pikmin, is uh, one of the last games that they're trying to uh, release for the new 3DS, uh, or well, for the 3DS in general. Um, and he and he did say that they are trying to they're releasing it to promote the last few games um, because so, they do they they want to secure the Switch as the as the kind of like final or as like the console after it, you know, like they want to focus on the Switch. But they had these games <laughs> planned, and so in order to really shoot out those games and make and promote them well, they wanted to release yeah. it. On top of that, it's not like they're really losing any money by making the 2DS. In fact, I think the 2DS, like the new 2DS XL, is probably like I'd say at least like 75% profit like, like, with each one being sold. And then, like the 2DS like, itself is like 80 bucks. Yeah, yeah, like the the the, the production costs for that thing have to just be like dust. Yeah, but yeah, so. 2DS XL console has been revealed. Hopefully there's gonna be some combo package with the two of them. If it, I mean, I wasn't planning on buying a new 2DS XL, but if there is a new 2DS XL that's custom made specifically uh, for Hey Pikmin, well, I don't, well, there goes 150. <laughs> okay, um, to anyone who is perhaps worried about this, because I am, here's my worry, here's my initial worry. Now, in the advertisements that we uh, America got for the new uh, or the new 2DS, uh, they did not say anything about us receiving a uh, white and orange one. That's the one I want to get, and I was kind of uh, um, distraught that we are not getting one. However, in Nintendo of America, they are play testing with those ones, so that kind of implies that we might be getting them, even though they're not straight up saying it. Um, just wanted to. Put Put that out there because I care about that, and maybe someone else does. So the cream sickle okay. 2DS. I love, I love it. I, right. I'm buying that one so unless then, there's a Pikmin one. But now that we've kind of discussed the 2DS, there is going to be a Pikmin Amiibo uh, with yes. the game, and it looks really, really nice. Let me pull up the picture I have of it. Where is it? There it is. It features a cinder block. Rock Pikmin, Red Pikmin, Wing Pikmin, Yellow Pikmin, Blue Pikmin. There's a bolt. It looks really, really nice. The amiibo is going to be adding more Pikmin to the actual game. Like, and, like it, it teleports Pikmin in, right? Yeah, it warps them yeah. in. Yeah, that's that's neat. I think they're probably gonna have more features than just that, but we'll see when the game comes out and we get the amiibo and uh, we touch it. I mean, we t touch it in the game. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, also, obviously, also, oh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I was just gonna say. Also, Nathan, I don't know if you wanted to get into your theory about uh, about what you said last time about like amiibos, like how they might just be releasing them in like the form of series amiibos and not gaming specific amiibos. Oh, so basically, if you look at like the box of the amiibo, uh, it says Pikmin at the top left corner twice. It says Pikmin and then Pikmin. So basically, if you look at other amiibos, you can tell what this is. Pikmin. Is the series like the top Pikmin in, with the logo is the series of amiibo, whereas the second Pikmin is just the amiibo in that series. So it is possible that we'll see more Pikmin amiibo. Uh, I don't know what they would do. They might have a Pikmin Olimar amiibo or a Pikmin Louis amiibo if this if they continue the same series when uh, Pikmin Four comes out. Who knows yeah. what they're gonna do? Um, but it seems weird that you know with Pikmin Four potentially around the corner, and there's it's likely that we will be seeing amiibo for that game as well what they're going to do there it's it's interesting mm -hmm. 
We could also see amiibo uh, for each specific Pikmin. Like if we had like a red Pikmin ami amiibo, it could either feature like a bigger version of the red Pikmin or it could have like three red Pikmin on some sort of fire geyser or something. Yes. Oh, I, I want a Bulborb amiibo really bad. <gasps> oh, that'd be well, great. I want a Chickborb, whatever we call those things. Oh, I hope not. I don't. I would rather have a Bulborb amiibo. I want both. <laughs> I'll take both. Both is good. I'll take a Snaggered Amiibo. Ah, oh, yes. Oh, oh man. man, that would be sweet. Oh, I'm excited for Pikmin Amiibo. That will be great. This is the first time that we've ever seen any Rock Pikmin merchandise in the United States. And it's the second time that we've seen Winged Pikmin merchandise, the other one being the plushie. So that's pretty cool that we're actually getting, you know, some merchandise because Pikmin 3 really... We didn't get a lot. Um, it was kind of underrated, I guess, in that sense. Um, Tommy, did you want to go over your theory with the Amiibo? Okay, so I guess to kind of transition on to talking about the uh, the uh, box art, uh, I did notice that the, uh, I think a lot of us noticed that the uh, box art, the logo for Pikmin, is a little different from what we're used to. Uh, normally, it's a it's like the flower or the Pikmin flowers like forming the words Pikmin, but in this game, it's like the same like cinder block concrete that we see in the amiibo, and that that just strikes strikes me a little bit. Um, and I I mean I don't want to read too much into it, but I feel like it should be pointed out at least a little bit like maybe there's some sort of significance to that whether it be symbolically mechanically um aesthetic it could just be a pointing to the aesthetics of the game in general that could be literally all um but i just thought it was worth noting another possibility is what if because it, it, it goes without saying miyamoto himself said that he wants uh pikmin to become a mainline series in uh for nintendo he even said he wants to aggressively work harder to make Pikmin on the same tier as Mario and Zelda, or at least try to. So I think it's safe to say that this isn't the first Pikmin spinoff we're getting. What if the whole concrete thing or like non-flowers is just how the uh, the logo will be stylized for spinoffs? Yeah, I was actually thinking about that. Like the, re the, the fact that they didn't have the flower signifies that it's not a main series game. Also, I'd like to um, mention how the two different box arts, they kind of have the whole like European American Kirby box art thing going on where uh, what I'm assuming is the American box art has Olimar fighting the chip board. And then in the European one, Olimar's mad. No, 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 no. In, in, in the European one, Olimar's just walking. And, and a monster's in the background or a backdrop instead of being attacked yeah like in pikmin 2 yeah that's actually a good thing that's a good thing to know also uh okay yeah we mentioned this last time and again this is new cares but uh, uh the uh european box art seem seemingly takes place uh in the same place as the pikmin 3 uh, box art or so or some did we make note of that huh I was gonna actually point that out that um, yeah. it looks very similar to Pikmin. 3. Very, very similar uh, to Pikmin 3's box art. Um, uh, I guess another thing worth noting is that that is the chick, the chick borb, whatever you want to call it. That enemy, it always appears on the box art, uh, so it kind of acts as kind of like a flagship monster of the of the uh, series. Um, mm -hmm. which is interesting. Um, it's essentially the 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 bull board replacement in the main series games because now the bull board is like a boss so I, I, and i mean that that being said it's it's hard to say because well yet again we have seen it a lot in the gameplay so far as opposed to my the example i was going to bring up to kind of like offshoot that is the cromad from the pikmin 2 box art that's really not that important but that yet again that's the uh that's the american box art exclusively so um yeah it's like that you could argue that was the flagship of that game but it really isn't <laughs> it's just like it is there it comes in two different sizes though it has to be important 
Sure. <laughs> Blue Pikmin uh, and the Rock Pikmin look like they're about to like try and trip the Bulburb in the American art. I absolutely love how that one yellow Pikmin on top of the Bulburb's eye just looks like he's about to like send the crushing finishing blow. Like he's about to get like play the game and just mm-hmm. and kill this thing. Oh, also, I wanted to mention something about the European box art. The uh, the the one red Pikmin uh, that's closest to Olimar, not the one on the logo, but to the left of Olimar. That pose is actually exactly right. the same as a pose from Pikmin One art. Uh, yeah, the old renders. That, that's okay. That's what I was thinking. Like, because I was like, the the European box art references something, but that's the one. It it is the same. Uh, same goes for the blue Pikmin farthest yes. from Olimar. Yes. Oh yeah. Where's the yellow Pikmin? I guess the yellow Pikmin kind of. A, Appears in the uh, American. Is this the Pikmin One remake that Miyamoto wanted? Uh oh. <laughs> that makes sense. No, that was Pikmin Three. This is the real Pikmin Three. That was Pikmin Two and a Half. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> also, uh, another thing, another similarity between uh, this and Pikmin One is the Pikmin inside of the Pikmin logo, like in between the letters and such, because they haven't yeah. done that since Pikmin One. Oh, yeah, that is right. true. Shall we move on then to the story? Yeah. All right. So, also, apologies, my background gets a little bit noisy. So, I might cut Olimar off halfway crashes. through. Olimar crashes okay. the SS Dalton 2 on a new planet, and the new planet's got Pikmin, and it's also got wildlife with you know, 404. By the way, they actually said new planet, but it's kind of up for debate on whether or not that was a translation error. Because yeah. the, the right to was directly translated from Japanese, and it could have just been like a. Um, Although we did make note that uh, this website says a new world as well. Well, yeah, but I think a I new world could mean something though from new planet. Yeah, I mean, That's America true. Is called new world. That's like true. it could mean a new region. Yeah, like it's just a whole new section. Like it's that. hard to say, but if, if it is, if it is, uh, we don't even know if this game's canon or not. But the, the, the whole thing is just a really weird scenario. But yeah, so, yeah. So the whole point of the game is Olimar crashes on this planet. Um, it looks like he was driving through like an asteroid field, and he was trying to like swerve, and he ended up swerving right into one, and then crashed into the planet. And the planet had uh, what looked it had a master onion, I think. If yeah, you look, it did. Really yeah, cool. and it had uh, a master onion. There was working. a whole colony of. Pikmin. Yeah, yeah, there's a whole colony of Pikmin already like in the wild there. And um yeah, he crashed and he needs these things called sparklium seeds to uh repair or in uh it says repair on the site and then I think your gamers articles to refuel or something, something like that. that. Yeah. 30,000 sparklium is needed to complete it's, the game. Yeah, it's, yeah, it yeah. It said refuel in the trailer. It was like that's what they said. Yeah, the end goal is to collect 30,000 total sparkling, and you get them by uh, collecting treasures, and I think certain enemies drop them when they die. Most and you enemies do. Field. Um, something interesting to note is that instead of a, uh, a fraction uh, determining if uh, Pikmin can carry things, if you actually looked in the gameplay, it shows that there's like these little like un- unfilled bubbles, and like you know, uh, like for example, if something needs four there'll yeah. be four bubbles and you throw Pikmin and like each bubble will fill up. And then the Pikmin don't seem to carry anything. They it just immediately gets like sucked into a portal and collected. Which is weird because well, no, they, um, they carry it to Olimar. I explain oh, that. Okay. Uh, what happens is if if say there's a treasure that Olimar could walk straight to without having to get Pikmin to grab it, he just grabs it himself causing the portal to open up above him and he gets sucked up. Yeah, and when you have Pikmin carry it, they carry it to Olimar and then Olimar yeah, does Yeah, if you can't reach it directly. Portal. It definitely does look like it's some sort of thing is coming off of his body to turn into the portal thing. It, he, it, it's almost like he's the Pokemon Hoopa. <laughs> like he has those hoop that open up hoops that open up new dimensions. Show oh, yeah, just like that's his stand. It's just it's some of the vortex and it just yeah. sucks things into it. And also his uh <laughs> his jetpack. Uh we oh. did we did find out exactly how his jetpack works. It's not exactly for up and down. Uh there is a little bit of an upward boost. It's mostly horizontal. Yeah, it's mostly like a hovering thing to get from like up to a platform that's farther away. 
So it, it, it's not really super helpful. Like if there is a treasure above you, you have to throw your Pikmin up to bring it down to you. You can't just fly up there. There's only a small jump. Right. You don't even need it for small jumps, really, because Almar will climb stuff. Like, I, I was watching it, and any time there's a little lip, Almar would just climb up the lip, which was pretty cool. Almar's a big boy now. Yeah, yeah he's a lot yeah. more. And also, if, did, did we ever mention that he can swim now? Yeah, he can swim, and the blue pippin swim along with him, which is they also yeah. function like they have really short range throws, and rather than swimming toward the enemy like a Pikmin three, they just like you basically just shoot the Pikmin out and they come back. It's not similar to like they, uh, they, Smash. They were, yeah, similar to Smash. Also, uh, any Pikmin that touch a sparkly on while swimming behind Dolomar will collect it. Uh, unlike on land, where you, if a Pikmin collects a Sparklium, they'll carry it to Olimar. Hmm. Yeah, when, when when you're in the water, the game almost becomes like a shooter. Like, your Pikmin don't go until they hit the land anymore. They just go a set distance, and then they come back to you. So it's like, it's like you're shooting uh, Pikmin at that point. And you have full, like, you can go up, down, left, and right. Yeah, it's the throwing controls seem very unique, I guess, because the further you touch away, is the stronger the, sh the throw. So it could have been that blues may not have a short throwing range. It's just that they're just being touched really close because of narrow passages or something. I don't know. But I think we've covered the story heavily. Uh, oh, um, other things to note: Pink and Rock Pikmin were revealed with the amiibo. And, and they were in purple and white. Right. Were they shown in gameplay? Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah, the. Well, no, 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 no. Purple. Not, not purple and white. We just assume they. Oh, are. No, 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 no. Rock, rock and wings. Yeah, but and then purple and white were possibly. A hint. I, it's we broke clearly hinted, but there's always that possibility of doubt. No. Um, because in the Master Onion, there was distinct purple and white, and it's not like with Pikmin Three where they were all mixing together and we were it's... seeing green and purple. Yeah. It was definitive. Whether they're in the game or not is not obvious, but it is it is it was definitely both purple and white in the onion. Yeah. Also, can we mention how interesting that scene with the onion is? Because how it's like Pikmin three style gameplay, looking with three dimensional like, graphics. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. I find it interesting. Uh, like it's gonna be that way. They in cut might scenes, use three like D graphics for like important cutscenes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It literally looks like Pikmin 3 on the 3DS, which is what's fascinating. But, uh, what's that? I think that's really it for story stuff. And next would be enemies we've seen. Um, we should probably go over returning first. Yeah, well, I'm just going off of what we have written down. So Fiery Blowhog returns as a, it looks like a boss, has health bar and all yeah. that. Yeah, health, boss health bar. Um, Yellow Wallywog returns, but not as a boss, right? It's a normal enemy. Very big yeah, normal enemy. Um, there's a creature that looks a lot like a redesigned anode beetle. Uh, Jordan, would you like to talk yeah. about the the bread bug looking enemy? Well, there's a bread bug. It takes one hit to kill. It's very basic and also pretty small too. They, they, um, see, they seemingly the most common like grunt enemy. Like they actually yeah. have like boombas in this game. Yeah, yeah, I I, I equated much. them a lot to shear grubs. In fact, I'm surprised they didn't use shear grubs for this role. I, I'm, I more or less wanted Jordan to say because I thought he was just going to call them low oh, flings. Oh, you mean the low flings? Yeah. Yes, the low flings. Point out how they have the same shape as a giant bread bug, more more traditional. Yeah, more square. Except like. one one bun instead of two buns. Yeah. I hope we get a Piclopedia so we'll actually get names for all these creatures. Yes. Yeah. Or at least, at the very least, the I have a feeling. I have a feeling that we might because if you watch the gameplay, you can see that the treasures are named. Yeah, they yeah. have. Like they make it important that you see the names of them. So we might. Did, did okay? Did Yoshi's New Island have the enemy museum? Yeah. For people? Okay. This, this, so. The museum, no. Like the zoo, yeah. Oh, it didn't have the zoo or anything like that? Nah, that was just uh, DS that only had that. Oh, okay. Well, then, never mind then. I was thinking, I thought that was a common thing in Yoshi. Never mind on that. No, I think um, uh, Yoshi's Woolly World was the first one to do that. No, uh, no DS. Yes. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, no, I think the world was more taken off what uh, Epic Yarn did, which is cool. I but... think there was something either in the manual or something like that for um the for, like Yoshi's Island on the Super Nintendo saying uh, uh, somewhat well known is the I think it was one of the, the, the I think it was the Nintendo Power or some guide where they they gave enemies like family Latin yeah, sound, yeah that's, that's for the that's I only for the I family. only brought that up because if it was in New Island it would increase the chances of something similar being in Hey Pikmin because you know if they've made it before yeah. they would make it again easy uh, that was the they, reason why I brought if that it's up. not in Hey Pikmin and we can't scan enemies like in Pikmin three I wonder where we'll get the names yeah. So then, uh, let's see. We've also seen an electrical burrowing bug enemy and a firefly-like enemy, and I'm hoping pictures of these show up uh, or something. Some of show up what we're yeah. talking about. Um, I'll post it. The firefly. Okay. Okay. okay, so we should probably elaborate more on those and, you know, slightly brushing over them. Yeah. Um, okay, so oh. by burrowing, uh, we've never actually no. seen the electrical bug burrow, but it always... We've only seen it live in subterranean. It's locations. on the cover of the box art where its colors look different. I actually mistook it as three bugs with antennas facing forward rather the, than uh, American box art. art. Um, yeah. Yeah, but we've never actually seen them burrow. They've just only ever been underground. Oh, and um, also what is weird is in the Japanese box art, they are also there, but they're much larger. Like for closer up, reason. Or physically bigger looking. They they look like they're physically bigger because everything else is the same size. It's hard to um, distinguish. And the firefly enemy. Uh, so from what we can see, this firefly enemy will like patrol back and forth, and when it hits the end of its patrol, it will dispense this purple spore-like ball. That, that hurts falls kind of slowly. We don't know what it does when it touches Pikmin. It but... kills. Do we wait? Do we have we seen it? Yeah. Oh. There's, yeah. there's some like really horrible gameplay where people like directly throw their Pikmin into them because they're horrible at the game. Uh, oh, absolutely. So it's just an like, kill. Not not even like no offense. I mean full offense. You're bad at the game. Whoever uploaded that. Uh, yeah, like um, yeah, it kills them. It, it's one shot. Doesn't even poison them. It's just one shot. They're dead. Okay, so it's okay. So then, yeah, yeah we know what juice. they do. Wait, wait, wait. What, what bone what, hurting what, juice? What? What, what, what poisoned them? The flying enemies. Um, oh. they were in the cave. Yeah, I, I, I know what you're talking about. The vines. But, uh, so it's just death scores. Okay. It's just bone hurting juice. Yep. So. Two more uh, flying, cre uh, small flying insects. There's the green snitch bug looking dudes with uh, the, yes. fla uh, the flower they have, propeller. Okay, those they have like a flower like propeller, and they'll just randomly come on screen with carrying both Barclium seeds and Pikmin. They might and carry Pikmin other things, them. but uh, that's all we've seen so far. There's another enemy that's pretty much seems to be related to them that people don't mention. It's like a small purple flying bug with very pointy looking legs that are basically obstacles. You can see them in the footage we got before um, the area footage where it's in the Japanese footage, but I'm pretty sure it's also in the American one, English one. They just fly by in formation and basically they're like spiky hazards from what I could see. Oh, there were they also the... Some, they might be a subspecies of the green ones. Oh, yeah, that's possible. That's what I was thinking, we're... they look related. Um, we also had those little purple sea urchin things where if your Pikmin touches them, they die. Yeah, yeah. they have no There's eyes on them. No, they function like game. urchins. They function like urchins for Mario, basically. And speaking of that, the puckering blinos, as Jordan would probably want to talk about, function like uh, fish bones. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Um, we've seen gameplay with the puckering blinos, like actual good gameplay. And they act very similar to fish bones from the new Super Mario Brothers Wii and U games, where when they see like the player or the player's group of Pikmin, they will target and swim in that direction for a short period of time. Is um, that how they worked in Super Mario World as well? No, no. Super Mario World they just went back and forth usually. Yeah, in, in, um, in Galaxy they they were like shark bone looking enemies, but they're technically fish bones and summoned by a. Uh, Kingfin, and they would chase you and act like torpedo Ted's. But that's another story. 
But yeah. So, uh, puckering blinos. I mean, is there anything else? That oh yeah. yeah. Um, there is the giant. Uh, we we see more of the giant lamprey looking things that are similar to the to like a boss version of them. That's more anglerfish like. Seems to be different, but similar coloration. And um, um, there's two. There's those giant green snitch bug like dragonflies that don't have wings but they seem to be rooted onto something with their tail and then there's these large much smaller though pink dragonflies that you see omar with a jetpack a group of winged pikmin flying around probably could be used as platforms is um I'm sure if we're forgetting anything i think so i think that's Double kind check. of everything Oh, we need to talk about the treasure. Well, I mean, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, for the enemies, just so we can move oh, yeah. on. Yeah, I'll take a look while you talk about the treasure. Yeah, all right. So treasures. Um, well, we knew that there were treasures in the game, but we actually do have names of a few treasures that were collected through the gameplay we've seen. We have a pearl ring, or a ring with a pearl, I guess would be a more appropriate way to say it called the Loop of Beginnings, worth 100 Sparklium, and that's probably called the Loop of Beginnings because it's the first treasure of the game. Um, our Sapphire Ring, called the Constellation Prize, worth 100 Sparklium. Uh, second Sapphire Ring, called the Blues Eradicator, worth 100 Sparklium. Uh, a Yo-Yo, called the Hypno Pendulum, worth 100 Sparklium. A Harmonica, called the Song Sewer, worth 400 part Sparklium. A dip pen a called the Peace Missile, worth 400 Sparklium. A whistle called the Giga Whistle, worth 100 Sparklium. An electric toothbrush called the Berserker Brush, worth 400 Sparklium. And a tube of toothpaste called the Rocket Polish, worth 200 Sparklium. And that's what we have written down. I don't know if there's anything else that we found. I, I took that straight off the wiki, so... <laughs> okay, well then that's all we have then. Can I explain yeah. some treasure mechanics? Sure. Uh, because I feel, I feel like that's relevant to the topic. Uh, every level, every level seemingly has three treasures that you need to collect, uh, because there's three double or there's three bubbles on the top right of the screen. Um, every time you collect a treasure, it uh, fills up uh, whatever part of the bubble. It's kind of like in like Mario game or in like the new Mario games where it has like three red uh, star three coins. Star coins, you uh, collect it and then it uh, it gets added to that list. So I, that's like an incentive. Oh, 100 percent the level, you know. And you get a fuck ton of um, uh, sparkleium from them. But um, from watching some gameplay, uh, when you beat the uh, when you beat the level um, and you get all this uh, all the treasures from it, if you go back to that same level, um, which I mean is a thing, so obviously uh, you can go back to levels. It's like a level select thing, um, or I mean that's what's being implied here. Um, you go back to the level, and the the treasures are being replaced by uh, rainbow sparkleium uh, seeds, uh, which I assume are value are very very valuable. I don't remember wh how much. Hundred each or something. Are they hundred each? That's a lot. Maybe I maybe I I don't know. I'm trying to think because I know that uh, the ghost star coins in Super in New Super Mario Brothers, when you go back to collect them, it still gives you score. So oh. I think it's equivalent score, or it might be half. If that's the case, then maybe it's worth like fifty oh. or something. Yeah, I don't know. yeah. They, they all get replaced by uh, by sparkleium uh, seeds, rainbow ones, uh, when you go back to the level. Uh, um, so yeah, that, that 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 to me implies that there is a uh, like okay, you can go back to the level or previous levels. So therefore, there's like a level selection thing. It's not just like a linear. Okay, you start with this one, and then there's the next level, next level, next level. It's uh, probably going to have a world map, probably. Yeah. But, uh... We could, uh, we could uh, briefly talk about some of the obstacles there yeah. are. Like, there's um, the mm -hmm. crystal walls that you smash through with your rock Pikmin. There's dirt blocks that you smash through, and, and since Pikmin basically function like lemmings, where once they land, they start yeah. moving in one direction. Can I say something real quick? Not hmm. sure. It just occurred to me right now. I'm not a hundred percent sure if there will be white and purple Pikmin in story. But the reason I'm, I even realized that just now is because if you remember in the new footage that we just got a couple of days ago, there's a scene where you throw uh, some yellow Pikmin onto a weight, and then they do a ground pound. And I fe I feel like if that would have been a good opportunity to implement purple Pikmin, but they didn't. 
It right could now. be well, though. Well, I mean, that level off. was the that level was the yellow introduction level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the well, three well, levels yeah, yeah, we've yeah, seen yeah. are more but, or less showing off basics, like the red Pikmin are the introduction, it's showing off how yeah, hard, I, how high yellows not, are thrown and blues. That's not my point. My point is though is that they had a weight based mechanic, and they you, you could just use any Pikmin to solve it. Well, it could be that purples would still be. Let's just say maybe they're not weighing ten; they're weighing five, and it could be that. You know, they can you can still be used, or there might be an optional side thing that makes things easier, or a level specific. There could be weights that require a lot of Pikmin. Yeah, like because I remember I think it was in game, not, maybe not game, explain to me game spot. Their thing they were saying that they almost missed uh, a secret because they didn't have, they barely had enough Pikmin. So it could be that you need a certain Pikmin type, You're like well obviously a certain Pikmin type, but I mean. Like, let's say you encounter something, you know, you need 101 Pikmin to weigh it down. You'll need purples and then something that's not a purple. There can be, they, they can be used heavily for weight and lifting and all of that. It would just have to be scale. Um, what I was saying about uh, obstacles, I want to give an example of some basic uh, puzzle concepts this game has to offer. Um, in the, the second area of the cave where you find, have the yellow Pikmin, there's a section where there's one of those dirt blocks I mentioned, and there's one of the, the chick borbs, as we're calling them, or bird borbs, to the right. And you throw the Pikmin up there to get what I assume was a sparkling seed. And the Pikmin will automatically walk forward. If they keep walking forward, the bird will eat them. So throw the Pikmin on the on the dirt cube, they fall down safely, basically. Like you gotta watch where they're going and you know, put obstacles to block them for heading and danger and things like that. I'm seeing there's gonna be a lot of puzzles like that, I'm gonna imagine. Uh, I'd also like to mention that I saw a spot in the game where the bird borbs were constantly respawning. Yeah, coming out of the wall. Maybe, the maybe they stop after a certain time or it's infinite, we don't know, but probably infinite. Yeah. Guys, uh, in Yoshi's uh, Island, where if you stand a certain spot, they don't spawn. Can I make note that um, I, I was actually having a conversation with someone about this. Um... I feel like uh, the speed at which Pikmin walk and carry things is kind of important um, because and and it and it implies to me that in the future we might be actually seeing the white Pikmin given they uh, uh, carry things faster or this might be a thing implemented with uh, white wing Pikmin because they can uh, bypass certain obstacles. Uh, I, I I can only assume they would. Um, I can imagine that there will be a lot of speed-based puzzles, like uh, maybe there's like a, a rock rolling towards your Pikmin, and like you need to make sure to like carry and uh, order them to do things in a timely manner to avoid uh, the Pikmin getting hit by whatever it is um, mm. facing them, uh, because the Pikmin the Pikmin uh, speed is just slow enough to uh, imp like. They, they wouldn't make them that slow for no reason, is what I'm trying to say, because... I also have, um... Okay, so, to a similar notion, there's probably going to be some puzzles where you throw a bunch of Pikmin into an area where you can't get with Olimar, and then you have to follow them, and then... Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I mean, yeah. Like, you're, you're gonna have to, like, manage them from below and just watch them and, like... Throw throw Pikmin at other obstacles to let them through properly, probably. But you can't directly interact with those Pikmin because they're carrying things, which I think um, is really exciting to think about because I, I love okay. those puzzles. So back back to uh, other obstacles that were noticed. Um, there in the Japanese um, footage of the direct. Uh, with the Wallywog, there's also raindrops that were pretty large, so I'm guessing that they're significant. Also, in that same level, you're given blue Pikmin. So, my assumption there is that those raindrops are actually hazards if you had Pikmin that aren't blue. Um, I wonder if it makes it's... sense. Oh, guys, you've got to mention uh, the garden trowel that you knock over. Oh, yeah. The garden trail, um, in like the first level, uh, it takes, you just have to like keep throwing Pikmin at it and it makes a bridge. 
Um, yeah, it has like a health bar looking thing that shows when it's about to get knocked over. I feel like that's something they could implement into the main series games as well. Yeah. But yeah, it would be kind of awkward to like walk over it. It would have to be something else, ball. but... Yeah. The same concept could be used. Uh, I did want to talk about how vulnerable the Pikmin seem to be in this game. It's like when, you know, in like previous Pikmin games where a Pikmin gets eaten, if you kill the enemy, like within a certain amount of time, you'll rescue the Pikmin. That doesn't Pikmin exist in this. Larva. That doesn't exist in this. It's like right as the enemy gets the Pikmin, it's almost like frame one, the Pikmin is dead. And you see, you yeah, hear they all. They all evolve from so blob blob larva. So basically, you mean to tell me that every enemy in Hey Pikmin is the blob blob larva? Yes. Yeah. What I've been saying. That's exactly what I'm. Yeah. Also, um, I just wanted to ask, um, Alex, is there any input you want? Because you haven't said anything since you promised us you're not autistic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Wait, Alex isn't autistic. I'm, I'm, uh, it's news to me, man. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, like, is, is there any input you want, like, on the game? Are you excited for the game? Do you think it's cool? Do you think, what, what do you think about it? I, I, I really can't put any opinion on it until I, I think I try it. Only because are you, um, are you I'm a not. Pikmin fan? Yeah, I, I love um, pretty much the Pikmin series. I started when I was in like, six. I played Pikmin 2, and I had no idea what the fuck was going on, but I still loved it. Um, then Pikmin 2 is my favorite game uh, in the series. Pikmin 2 is okay. I'm not sure if I've really ever finished it, but it just because it was, I don't know, kind of different to me, but it wasn't bad, pretty much. But, like, um, I'm not sure. Like, I could say, I don't think it's, I hate Pikmin 2 be bad, but I, I really can't say anything until I play it because it seems so different. From yeah, I feel like that's kind of like a cons consensus across really most of the internet, too, just, you know. It looks like it can do a lot of good things, but we can't say anything until we try it. Hopefully they release a demo. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm personally excited for it. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited in it because it opens up spin-offs. <laughs> yeah, that, that's actually something I wanted to ask to all of y'all really quick. So that's something that I've been wondering because, uh, so like, to the people that didn't like it, like, this is kind of what I always imagined a Pikmin spin-off would look like, because I knew eventually we'd get one. So, I, uh, I like to, to the people that didn't like it, I just keep asking, like, what exactly did you expect the Pikmin spinoff would look like? Like, what do you Pikmin guys, is, is, this, is this pretty much what you expected? Because, honestly, this is exactly what I expected. Or maybe it's just all the people who are unhappy with it just think it's Pikmin 4. Yeah, that's yeah, what I was just, another... does, does anyone else here think it's actually gonna, it, this is Pikmin 4? It's not. I, I, no. I'm gonna say no, simply be, simply based off of two things. First off, why would they not have the main Nintendo group working on it? Why would they have a more second party kind of thing working on it? And then people like Reggie, Miyamoto, um, Bill Trennan, all these big Nintendo heads, and a lot of people from Nintendo, even the, I can't remember the name of the guy, the guy who just stepped down as the president of the EAD, they all love Pikmin. And I and like, and feel not to like, this changing the formula this much isn't what they would want because it's not the same thing. Yeah, and, and also, something else. Yeah, and not to mention, we actually went over this in a previous podcast, but I'll just re reiterate it here for simpli simplicity. But Miyamoto himself already said that they're working on Pikmin 4, and he's, he said that it was going to be, uh, in his own words, quote unquote, a game that hopefully would convince people to buy a Wii U. So we knew at one point it was going to be a Wii U game. Obviously, the Wii U is dead now, so it, it's safe to say that the game is probably going to is probably in development for the Switch. I honestly would not be surprised if we hear about it before the end of this year. If we don't hear it before the end of this year, I'm going to be very, very confused as to what exactly was going on. Because that's actually something I often bring up when I talk about Pikmin 4. It's just, it's so weird, because the only time we've ever heard about it being mentioned is directly from Miyamoto's mouth, which seems promising. But it's only from him behind closed doors. We never hear about it from any other Nintendo source, and it's always like in, in like a private small interview. Where and a lot of times those interviews are like recorded in advance and then aren't released for like a month or like a week or a month afterward. It's just it's such a weird occurrence. I, I, I simply imagine it. 
the, like, the interviewer just asks, so, where's Pikmin? Like, I feel like that's literally yeah, the question. Oh, I, Yamato I just, is, like, the only one who thinks of it, and he's just like, oh, yeah, Pikmin, we've been working on that for a while. I, 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 I just want someone else to ask someone else at Nintendo that's not Reggie something about Pikmin 4 and see if they know because, uh huh yeah sorry my bad yeah yeah because like, I, I don't want this to be like a Sean Murray thing with No Man's Sky where this is just Miyamoto talking about what he wants to happen but isn't actually happening you ask Reggie and he's just gonna say no comment yeah it's it's, it's so it's so weird because like, it's like it's like the Phantom game that we, we're told from the most surest source that it exists but it's so weird because that's the only source. It, it's 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 a really weird circumstance, and I don't know how to feel about it. I can imagine. It, Sorry, it, it, the circumstance around the nature of Pikmin Four itself is just a really weird yeah. mystery. I just yeah. wanted to hurry up. Give me shivers down my spine. Oh, no, I'm, I'm just. I mean, I, I'm just imagining that like someone asks Reggie, like they're like, Reggie, just tell us. What's happened to Pikmin 4? And he just looks and he does that like really weird Reggie smile he does and just I feel like a purple Pikmin. And that's all the confirmation <laughs> we need. And then oh, no, that's no, it. No, Pikmin 4 is on the way. Even if it's just something as simple as have you heard about it? And like and then he's like I just want him to either say yes or no, Miyamoto's crazy or so, something. Like I just want to get a clarification from someone that isn't he, Miyamoto. He, he yeah. Said that's gonna be at it, like I said, I hope it is. It really needs to be. If it isn't, I'm going to be very confused about the validity of Miyamoto's own statements. Yeah, but that, I feel, would be another pick. That would probably be Switch Pick Cast, which we'll hopefully do soon, because we derailed it, and we've hit it 50 minutes a little while ago, so we're probably about hitting an hour, so I feel like we can wrap things up now. So, essentially, this is the Hey, pi the hey Pick Cast. Yeah, the Hey, hey Pick Cast. That was the whole thing. Um, so we went over oh, the story. Clever. Went over release again. This game comes out on the July 13th for Japan, July 28th for North America and Europe, and July 29th for Australia. Uh, it's also coming, being released back to back with the new 2DS XL console. Uh, there's an amiibo coming with it, and that's really kind of it. Um, we are working on getting information on Wikipedia, and if you'd like to contribute with it, you easily can. Um, other important things to note, we, there's the uh, Discord group we have, PNF404, there'll be a link in the description, you can go in there and you'll chat with us, chat with other people in the Pikmin community who like to sh share some stuff, yeah. um, and, and also, about 100 also just, people in there. Yeah, also, just to clarify, being in that group, I think we've said it before, but I'll say it again, being in that group does not guarantee that you will be on a PickCast, but you're totally free to ask if you want, and you will most definitely be able to speak with us on certain occasions. Yeah, and if you wanted us to, like, I don't know, like, plug something, I don't know, if, if like, if you, like, for example, if you do art stuff and you want us to, like, give you a plug, you know, be like, hey, can you mention this? If you draw us, you know, if you make PickCast art, we for sure will feature you. At least I feel you for oh, sure, because I'm a sucker for fan art. Uh, other things to note, and this will be in the description because I don't have it up, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on the Switch has the returning of tournaments, and I have set up a Pikipedia tournament thing. Uh, it's set to be reset daily, so every day there's a tournament just to see who wins. Uh, the rules are 150cc, no computers, and we're hoping to do some live streaming stuff with that just over the course of time. We're hoping to do some more live streaming stuff. It's super easy to stream with the Switch. So we're hoping to eventually, you know, have a big either Pikipedia turn, uh, Mario Kart 8 racing tournament or, you know, other kinds of things. Right now it's just set up with the race and it's more like a test kind of thing. Um, but the description, that'll probably, the code for that for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe will be in the description. Also with other multiplayer games coming to the Switch, like ARMS and Splatoon 2, we'll hopefully be able to do some tournament stuff with that as well or some competitive stuff or just, you know, more stream stuff that's not maybe Pik Pikmin specific. And then obviously, of course, if Pikmin 4 has online multiplayer, we will for sure yeah. do also, streams also, that. Be also, because you mentioned it, Josh, I don't think we've actually uh, publicly disclosed this. But yes, yeah, so once again, this year, Pikipedia will be having an IRL meetup in uh, the first week of July, and we will be ha we plan to have another live podcast. Unfortunately, this is probably going to be the last one for a while because I can't afford to keep doing this every year. It's a lot of money. 
but uh, this one is going to be fairly large with a lot more members than it did last time. Yeah. And uh, we hope you all will tune in this time around. Yeah, we're hoping again to do at least another Pikmin 3 tournament. We're making sure so it doesn't end up like last year where I sat in a leather chair basically naked for four hours God. in like 110 <laughs> degree heat playing Pikmin 3. Oh, God. I think Josh and... wants to rematch me. Dude, I want to rematch. That was against Simon. That was against I want, Simon. I want to rematch okay. all of y'all. You don't even know. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. So we're gonna be. We're hopefully, and I, I'm gonna say hopefully because again, I remember last year I also said we're gonna be doing face cam and we didn't do that. So I don't want to make any promises we can't keep, but hopefully, very hopefully, like 90 percent chance we can do that. And that's yeah. I don't think there's anything else that needs to be go over. All the important links will be in the description. Twitter. I, we kind of have a Facebook. And yeah, and with that, I believe we can do our little signature. <clears throat> Captains dismissed. Um, when I was a little boy, I looked in the sky and there was a great big blue spaceship, and I said, "Please don't shoot fire at me. I'll die." And it happened. And I'm dead now. I'm a... and <laughs> still here to this day. <laughs> story always makes me cry. That podcast was on fire. Are you are you are you trying to tell me that podcast got five consecutive kills without dying? Yeah, I was playing uh, Overwatch right now. No. Not I'm saying that a plane came down and shot fire at the. Pick Stop! Us. <laughs> I'm imagining it's the yeah. failed plane that like land. <laughs> he just crashes the, the pick up, hits the runway, and just going, and then just crashes into the trees. <laughs>